Scarlet Rot is the most powerful damage over time status in the game, and one that you seriously can't ignore once it's been procced. It's a bit trickier to apply the status in PvP than it is in PvE, but it can be really strong nonetheless. I'll play a montage of some highlights so you can get an idea of what this build can do, and then I'll go over all the stats and equipment in the second half of the video. There's also just some raw gameplay at the end, so skip ahead if you'd like, and of course if you do end up enjoying, I would greatly appreciate you subscribing. Welcome back. There aren't that many ways to apply Scarlet Rot, but what I found to be a plenty good way to do it is with the Rotten Crystal Sword. As with any status build, two is usually better than one, so I'm power stancing them. You could technically improve on this by using a broadsword in the main hand and buffing it with Rot Grease, but if you're like me and don't really have a bunch of that stuff, power stancing the Crystal Swords works just fine. Fine is an understatement really. Dual wielding straight swords is just insanely strong on its own, and even though you're stuck with spinning slash as your only Ash of War, it could be a lot worse. I went with a level 125 Vagabond for this build, and even though I wasn't using it in ranked, I tried to keep it within the rule set anyways. Of course I have the two Rot Swords equipped, and since I'm not right up against the threshold for medium rolling, I could technically hard swap to a heavier weapon if I really wanted to. I thought the armor set actually looked really good with this build, and it also happens to put me over the 93 poise breakpoint, which is super helpful in PvP. I'm using the fingerprint helm, beast champion armor, fire prelate gauntlets, and the bull goat greaves. You might have noticed that my beast champion armor looks a little off. It has a more detailed pattern and a purple hue to it, which I thought worked perfectly with the color of the rotten crystal swords. I have no idea why this works, but if you take off your armor, alter it at a grace, put the armor back on, and then unalter it, you get this fancy purple cape that lets you be that much more unique in the arena. A gimmick for sure, but worth it for the fashion of course. For my talismans, I'm running the Ritual Shield, Erdtree's Favor, Great Jar, and Bull Goat. Ritual Shield is one that I'd sometimes swap out after getting hit, either to the Blessed Dew Talisman or to the Blue Feathered Branch Sword. Pretty basic stuff in my hotbar, Boiled Crab, Fan Daggers, and FP Flasks. 
In my pouch, I have my Physic Flask, in which I was using the Crimson Bubble tier and Opaline Hard tier. Like I said, the starting class is Vagabond, and here are the stat allocations that I went with. There's a super useful tool to help you properly allocate stats in the Elden Ring PvP Discord that I use all the time. Slugbot is great for more than just stat allocations, but if you're wondering how to get the most damage out of a weapon, just figure out how many levels you have to dedicate to the weapon scaling attributes, plug everything into Slugbot, and it will tell you what stats you need to get the highest damage out of your weapon. You can see here my stats don't exactly match up with what is said, and that's because I also wanted to be able to use weapons with a higher dex requirement. I literally only lost 1-2 to two AR going from 58 to 55 strength, so it was easily worth it to me. If you want to join the Discord, just click that link in the description. These things actually hit really hard for what they are. Over 600 attack rating in both hands, plus that threat of Scarlet Rot buildup, it makes for a really powerful setup. You don't need any mind for this build, which is nice, and it lets me go to that comfortable 60 vigor with plenty of endurance. As for how the build plays out in a real match, I'd say I was applying Rot to people around half the fights. The main reason for failing to proc Rot was basically just because of people not having enough vigor to survive to that point. Can't exactly call that a con of the build, since if your opponent dies to a few hits anyways, who cares about the Rot? Even against someone really squishy though, Rot would still proc sometimes if they iframe too many attacks. It won't take the initial damage of the swing, but that status continues to build. This meant that I was sometimes rotting people before even dropping them below half HP, which would swing the fight way in my favor. It's kind of like the longer the fight goes on, the better your chances are. If I see someone using the Crimson Bubble tier, all the better really. If someone's using that while also having close to 60 vigor, rot fell almost guaranteed. I do have to mention boluses, of course, which are pretty fast consumables you can use to cleanse rot buildup. Honestly, I'd say that most random people at Main Academy Gate don't even have these on them at all. This was very obvious considering how many people would just give up once they were low HP. Obviously some people do have them, but if it's something that you're keeping an eye out for and maintaining a pretty close distance to the opponent, you can just use that bolus as an excuse to get a free hit. If I was standing right in someone's face as that rot was taking them down to zero, the best thing they could do was just go for a Hail Mary rush and hope they could kill me first. A Scarlet Rot build has its counters of course, for example people that would use a Bolus before it procced would usually take me off guard and they'd get it without trading. Overall the build was a ton of fun, Power Stance Straight Swords are as strong as ever, and the Rot build up made things a lot more interesting. I'm going to end off with some raw gameplay clips for anyone that prefers no music and fewer cuts.
As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and I'll see you next time.